thanks for uh, coming to team lettering and numbering start to finish. So uh, we're going to go through a couple different things and maybe hit some pricing in the end if we have time. I'm going to do a little bit of application. So again, we'll give them about one or two more minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you type them into the pathable chat box uh, and not into the Zoom. The Zoom one's not being monitored, so the pathable chat box is the way to go. There's also a copy of the presentation in the file section above the chat button. So if you, at the end, if you want to download it, um, feel free to do so. It'll be there. Also, it's being recorded, so you can definitely go back and look at this presentation as well as the other ones, right? There's been some phenomenal ones between Allison and Jenna and Kelly and Josh, um, Ryan. So just to name a few, but it's been a, it's been a fantastic um, event. Um, all right. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share my screen here. We're gonna walk through this a little bit. And here we go. Struggled a little bit with sharing my screen yesterday, but I think I got it today. So um, start to finish, team lettering and numbers, all right? My name is John Laux. I'm the national sales manager for Group Stall, Stalls and Transfer Express. Um, and what I wanna talk about is the sports market a little bit. So 40 million kids play sports, right? which basically means in a nutshell that there is so much opportunity out there for two things one to sell into that right um because i guarantee you know somebody that's playing sports or you know somebody that needs decoration or a, a name and number or something like that so you know it's out there it's you have the ability to to find business and find work right 25 million of those play official school sports so it's almost as big in school sports between volleyball and track and football baseball as it is into youth organizations so or it is bigger in youth organizations so soccer which is one of the biggest youth um, organized sports leagues um, you have baseball t-ball the different leagues there um, travel ball teams has become a huge huge thing and even more lately as your leagues and stuff kind of downsize a little bit and your travel ball teams grow um, kids looking for a little bit more competition and those types of things so they get on these leagues and then you find yourself you know or the team moving through different cities and, and even states as they travel and try to you know really get their team name out right because they're all branded you got your team itself and then you have all the fans that go along with it and we're going to talk about that um you know there's some statistics there 19 billion dollars industry right with its private coaching and equipment um you know our focus apparel but that includes tracking apps travel team membership right um there is a number there that the average team membership or initiation fee just to join the team is about 196 dollars um you know it used to be where it was 56 dollars or 55 dollars or 40 dollars to get in a league and that got you the the t-shirt and the hat and you know you bought your pants and stuff but the the initiation fees or the team fees have gone way, way up. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what to look for and what you focus on before you actually get started. And, and as you build your business in it as an entrepreneur and you think, okay, I want to get into sports, um, there's a couple things that really, really stand out to me. Uh, number one, Am I focusing on a couple sports or several sports, right? Because we know that the decoration and stuff varies a little bit, right? The timing varies a little bit. Maybe you are you want to focus on baseball during the fall or football during the fall and baseball in the spring, right? Or vice versa, or, you know, volleyball and, you know, swimming or something like that. So do you focus on one or, or be real good? People, People say that you can, you know, carry many bones, but you can only carry one really well, right? So 
um, depending on the garment and the sport, what's the best number size? When you get into some of these leagues and travel ball leagues and tournaments, you have a direct number size or team name size or way you decorate the uniform, right? Um, so my opinion is to do your research. Make sure that you know that volleyball takes four inch numbers on the front, six inch numbers on the back, right? Baseball takes, you know, four inch numbers on the front, possibly six or eight inch numbers on the back. Um, you don't want to climb into a sport or decorating uniforms and decide, okay, well, if I put a 12 inch number on the back, it'll look really good. Um, it might look really good, but it'll be really out of place, right? And they may not be able to wear those uniforms to a tournament or something like that because they don't meet the guidelines put in place to make everybody look a little universal. Um, there's ways to really spotlight and bring out that look or make the team a little bit better or a little high end or the decoration a little bit above the normal by different characteristics in, you know, heat transfer, um, whether that's sim stitch or vinyl or perforated numbers. And we'll talk a little bit all about that later when I compare two different volleyball jerseys, right? Um, am I cutting these names myself or am I, you know, getting them ready to apply? When we talk about pricing later, I'm gonna show you the examples of you know, buying those through a service, through stall services, and they come in ready to go. And it takes time out. Now it does cost more. Um, and that's okay, because it takes less time, right? You're not weeding or, or, you know, going through the product or lining it all up because it's ready to go. It comes in ready to go. It applies really easy. And, and it's very much my preferred way, right? Again, a little more expensive, but cuts out time and labor. Um, Cutting numbers yourself. I mean, people line up numbers and names and every little crevice of vinyl gives them the ability to really maximize their profit line. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a downside to that and that's time and labor, right? And the fourth thing is what's my value? Um, we all have a different value, right? We all, hopefully we have a value statement and what we bring. Um, and what we focus on. So is that delivery? Is that quality? Um, what is that? I mean, it's important that you take that, write it down, make sure you look at it and, you know, kind of live by that. You don't want to come off in the decorating area as somebody that doesn't deliver or gives a subpar product um, or subpar application. Um, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't bring back buyers right they're going to go somewhere else if they if they can't trust you or what they're putting on their team so what's my value right and my value would be quality product in a timely manner right i'm going to deliver on time and it's going to be well worth the money that you paid right right what's best know what's best for your jersey when we climb into football, we know that it needs to be abrasion, abrasion resistant, right? It needs to be tough, um, probably not stretchable, but it's going to have to last. It's going to be put through rigorous activity, and it's going to have to come out after the wash looking fantastic, right? And there's different ways to achieve that, but thermal film, thermal grip, depending on the jersey, is there. Volleyball is a little bit different. You know, when we think about volleyball and, and knowing our jerseys and knowing volleyball, we know that it needs to stretch and rebound. Um, it needs to be soft. It needs to be lightweight. And something people don't think about is it really needs to slide across the floor. Somebody dives and to save a ball from, from going out or hitting the ground, it doesn't, you don't want it to stick. You want it to slide. So um, know your jerseys and which HEG HTV works the best, right? I'm not saying that different stuff won't work on the jersey, and I'll show you the volleyball jersey in a little bit that's got two different products on it, both great examples, but while we, why we used something different, right? Soccer, again, very much like volleyball, multiple different options. Um, here you have to know your jersey. Soccer is very much sublimated. 
um, and very much heavily dyed, right? You've got dark colors, um, you've got different effects on the jersey and you need something to block that migration. So um, we could use the same product in soccer that we do in volleyball and make it work. But you really have to know your jersey and you really have to test it. Baseball, um, same way. You normally have a polyester, but many, many times you're going to have practice jerseys or warm up uniforms or something like that. And you're going to need to find the right product for each one of those items. Your polyester sports jersey is normally white, maybe navy. It's got a decorating area. You're going to put maybe a small number on the front with a full logo. You're going to put a name and number on the back and you have the ability to use different HDB vinyls. Um, you also have the, the ability to do an upsell. And that's why I have HDV and Twill here, because how can you sell it and make more profit? Um, knowing that your jersey, your baseball jersey, relatively is pretty heavy, you can go to a Twill, um, like your major leagues or your professional players have across the front, they have Twill, right? Added effect. Um, then you can figure out a way to kind of save money there. So instead of sewing it on, if you don't have an embroidery system type of thing, you can possibly go into SimStitch, uh, which I showed yesterday in a football uniform, right? So again, works good for both ways. Know your jersey, All right? All right, so here, single color versus full color. Um, I don't really have any full color examples here. If you were watching Allison's video just prior to this, um, she goes into full color a little bit, but multicolor on sports jerseys is normally the way it is. It's normally one, possibly two, you know, maybe in some effects you've got three, um, but logos are basic, right? Um, so it, the fact that logos are basic yields us to more options to decorate. Um, You've got your CAD cut silicone, your dyed block. So that volleyball jersey you see there, heavily dyed black. We don't want that turning gray or losing its brightness on the jersey. So we want something to block it. That's where the silicone dye block comes in. Um, thermofilm, same thing. We're back to a heavily, uh, uh, we see it on a football uniform there where it's, it's really abrasion, right? We talked about that a minute ago. We want something that's going to stick. It's going to stay. It's going to keep its distance um, as the jersey gets pulled. Um, it's not really going to stretch and rebound, but it doesn't need to, right? It needs to keep its shape and look the same. And that's what it is. Now, thermofilm will inhibit dye. It doesn't really block dye, but it will keep it you know, from coloring. If you've got a light jersey, you're okay. Um, I always use the example of cutting a tiny bit of a square or a little triangle and putting it on the inside of maybe the collar or the lower seam to kind of, you know, really see if you're going to get dye migration, right? If it's going to come through, you know, sublimation jersey, we know it's tough, but even some of your darker jerseys that are heavily dyed, you probably want to check. You might want to put premium plus so you get that stretch and full effect and lightness, matte finish on the jersey, but that jersey might not lend itself to that type of decoration, right? So up into silicone dye block. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, test, test, test. We say it all the same. Maybe you've tested something, you know, the jersey doesn't really lend itself that good to lighter decoration colors. Maybe you have to find something else. So know your fabric. Don't always go for the cheapest item, right? I mean, it might be cheap, but that's where we get into good, better, best, right? You can go cheap and on a jersey and only spend a couple of dollars on it but you're going to fight it in the decoration part you worry about that quality that you're putting out there um, and then we have other effects like the perforated uh, which i'm going to show you a little bit better today i i placed it yesterday on my volleyball jersey so i'm going to get it up really close to the camera and allow you to kind of see the effect and get a little bit of air bleed or or breathability for the vinyl. If we've got something thick like 
thermofilm, we can perforate that through services and really make it really make it breathable, give it a better effect, and just an all around better look. All right, the characteristics of the material can help set you up for success, right? And we talked about all these thermofilm, your abrasion resistance, dye inhibiting, your premium plus, excellent for stretch and rebound, thin and lightweight, your silicone, um, raised rubber fill, right? It does have a little bit of dimension to it, um, which is very, very popular today um, with its dye blocking capabilities, right? It doesn't really block them, it just that silicone doesn't accept the dye. So it just won't, it won't migrate into the film. Um, and then your perforated numbers that we talked about come in a variety of different ways, um, work great for sports and spirit well. Um, and that's something I didn't talk about too, you know, knowing your, your jersey is also something that you want to focus for in spirit wear. Um, you know, don't limit yourself to just the field, allow yourself to get into those bleachers too, right? And upselling. Um, we'll get into that too in a second. All right, so I've got two different um, garments here. So I'm gonna switch over. We're gonna do a little bit of an application feature. Um, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of pricing. Um, on my first one, that's gonna be that one on the right-hand side, that silicone dye block. And I wanna kind of compare it to the jersey I did yesterday um, in the volleyball jersey, just to show you the difference in material of where yesterday I used Premium Plus and it's standing pretty good. And today I'm gonna use silicone to block that sublimation jersey. Um, and then I'm gonna do a reversible tank basketball jersey. And we're gonna do both sides on our Fusion IQ and kind of give you that look and feel of where we're at. And then we're gonna do a little bit of a cost comparison and look at pricing, all right? As I switch this over, Stacy's my uh, counterpart. Is there any questions coming up? I did not see any right All now. Right. Let me just, um, oh, actually one just came in. What product would you recommend for gators specifically for numbers? I mean, if we're doing a gator product and it's on the face, you want something probably as lightweight as possible. Um, if you're not trying to get into digital, I'd probably go into premium plus or silicone. Um, again, your gaiters, a polyester or a four-way stretch jersey knit, um, something like that. It's very common. So, you know, premium plus on that jersey knit would be perfect. It would allow it to stretch um, on that two-way stretch polyester, kind of like our basketball jersey we're going to look at you probably wanna be into the silicone dye block, right? Because you might have a little bit of migration. So, all right, so I've got my heat press here. Um, I don't have to go far. So I'm kind of cramped in this little space here in my home studio. Um, I am moving, so that's kind of why my studio is not as beautiful as somebody like Kelly's, right? talk about all resources in one little spot. It's nice. So I've got the Fusion IQ here um, that I'm using. Um, the Fusion IQ, great press. Um, it allows me to spin it out of the way and really get to what I'm working on. Um, I've set the press to my silicone dye block, and that's what I'm going to do on my volleyball jersey here. I've got my silicone dye block. Now we did um, laser it out. We did do that in services. So you'll see kind of holes in that. I mean, it's not the best kind of view. Try to get it up there with that ring light. It kind of brightens it out. Let me turn that down. So you kind of see that most of the vinyls that we have are laserable. So it makes it easy for pulling the cavities out. Um, but the reason why we're using silicone on this Volleyball jersey is because it's sublimated. Um, you're not going to get that in a universal die, right? You've got some spots going from the bottom to the top. Um, you'll notice it's sublimated because it's a little wider inside, where a, a dyed garment would be the same color on both inside and outside. Um, so we know it's we know it's sublimated, and I would probably take and go to a sleeve. And I talked about testing fabric and putting something maybe right here. Um, 
or deep inside, maybe right here, just a little tiny bit, maybe the inside of a circle or something to really test and make sure that I'm not getting any dye migration, right? So that I can use Premium Plus if I don't or want to use something different from silicone, or if I have a different jersey that needs maybe bright orange or something, which I'll show you in a second as this one cools. So good thing about my Fusion, I am able to thread the jersey on and get my time, temperature, and pressure in the right place um, because I can, I alleviate any seams or, you know, high spots in my press by sleeving it over, right? I'm not laying it there. I've got no collar or anything like that sticking on the press. Now, again, I'm going to, before I put my logo on, I'm going to cover it up with my sheet, my Teflon sheet. Some use craft paper. I've got Teflon because I'm using a sublimated jersey. If I was using a, um, piece of craft paper, then I might get a lot of dye migration from the jersey into the craft paper, right, which is what we want to avoid in our transfer, but it would come up into our craft paper, and then I would run the risk of transferring that back onto the white area. So Teflon sheet in this instance is perfect for application. Now I'm going to close it down um, and get rid of any moisture in the garment, anything, give it that pre-press, iron it out, and then put my silicone dye block. So I'll remove this out of the way. Got a nice even iron on service surface. I'm going to go left chest. Um, now I'm not the greatest at lining up left chest, but I'm going to go straight down from the middle of the collar a little bit higher in place. Now silicone on this is a cold peel. So I know my fusion has the pre-press application, and then it has the application time. So I don't have to worry about that. I know I'm going down for 10 seconds and giving it a solid press for the full amount of time. Um, what's good is it also has the area for my pressure. So I don't have to worry about if I'm getting enough pressure. I don't, I could adjust it prior. I like to adjust it during my pre-press time. All right. And go from there. Now I am going to move this out of the way. And remember that it is a cold peel. So I'm not gonna peel it yet. I'm gonna set it aside. And then I wanna show you the jersey since we're talking about multiple applications and the same product being good for different sports or a different product being good for multiple sports. Here, yesterday, I did names and numbers with Premium Plus, right? Gives me that stretchable feel from left to right. So I get a good stretch and rebound from Premium Plus, but I don't get that dye migration. And why is that? Because this, although still a volleyball jersey, it is a dyed volleyball jersey, right? I don't have that white inside, right? That I had on the sublimation jersey that you saw a minute ago. So I'm good there. And I know that if I put a little something in the corner and test it, I wouldn't get that. Also, my perforated number, and let me show you this, get it up to the camera real close, is this is a perforated number. It's kind of hard to see there. Let me hold it, function, where I've taken a jersey, and though it's a standard name and number, I was able to probably upsell it and give it a little bit more value because it's perforated, right? I mean, there's not a lot of people that can perforate it. So this gives me the ability to, you know, get a, maybe a little more, more money out of the job with an added feature. Obviously that added feature, breathable, stretchable, and, you know, solid looks good, All right? So our silicone is now completely cooled back on our jersey. I'm going to give it just a little bit of plug to make sure it peel, peels okay. And it looks perfect. And we've got a perfect transfer. All right. So that was great. Now what I'm going to do is I want to get to my two-sided basketball jersey. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my time and temperature. Um, again, my I, Fusion IQ. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go look. It's already here. I just hit my programmable settings comes up with thermofilm, gives me my preset, 
gives me my application time. So I'm perfect. So we're going to let that heat up a little bit and I'm going to load my jersey. So let me set this aside. Now, one good thing about my jersey is it is reversible, right? Now I'm going to call this in the sense of lineup as the good, better, best, right? Because when we bring value to what we're selling, we always want to sell on that good, better, best premium. I'm going to show you that in our pricing guide in a second, but I'm going to consider this my best, right? It's a high-end jersey. It's not a mesh jersey. Um, it's definitely fully full polyester, um, so no holes, more like what you're going to see, right, on a, on a higher-end court or something like that. Um, now, the value is obviously higher, right? The price is higher. The value is higher. And I'm going to sell in that way. I'm going to let it feel that way. Um, now, as I load this on a mesh jersey, we'd have problems, right, worried about when we put our did our application, we would worry about the, it going through the mesh and getting the other side. That's why the sleevability of our press is so important. Now, luckily for me, I have a large, I believe this is a large or an extra large um, Badger jersey. So I'm able to sleeve the whole front over without any issue. And I don't have to, because I don't have the mesh, I don't have to worry about the inside sticking, right? So I can split the white from the bread and slide it over and still get a great application area because it's large enough. But that brings me to having the right equipment. Um, I have a removable six by 10 platen here. I would probably want the 11 by 15 that the Hotronics, and I know we've all talked about it, that quick release, pull it up, press it down, and then you've got the right application area. But luckily for me, the jersey is big enough and I can slide it over and get the most out of my application area. The bigger the area, the easier it is to line up, right? So I am going to put a name and number. I loaded that on the front side. I need to load it on the back side. And I'm going to do a one color number. Slide it all the way in here. And now you can see I don't have the ability to get all the way to the top, right? That's OK. And I unfortunately don't have an 11 by 15. Luckily, again, it's not a mesh jersey. So I'm able to slide it up. Make sure it's flat. Make sure I can get my name and number out of there. I would probably, if you don't have that removable platen, want to put something like a pillow in between um, in there to kind of elevate it and get you and break that piece. But I'm in good shape here because of the type of the jersey. Right? So, and I thought this was the name and number got a little mixed up. It really should go on the front, right? So I've got a name here, and this is actually a two color number, um, which we're gonna do on the, the white side. We're gonna do a red background and a white, but on the front side or on the red side, we're gonna do a solid white number, all right? So I'm gonna sleeve this one more time on the front. <clears throat> all right, spin this around. Grab my Teflon sheet, which I've dropped on the ground. Whoops, I'm standing on it. I'm gonna slide it in, give myself a quick, get the moisture and, and wrinkles out of the product. All right, I'm to temperature of that 330 temperature and I'm gonna place my garment down. Now, this is red, right? We all know that you can get some heat press marks in our product, right? Depending on what product it is. Luckily, red is a little bit different. Red will bruise a little bit, I like to say, and not so much scorch. Um, when I say bruise and scorch, I mean, it's gonna change colors, right? It's gonna change colors a little bit, but, but in a bruise, it'll go away. In a scorch, it will stay, so. All right, I've got it down. I'm going to bring my heat press around and give myself that quick press. All right, counts down. Thermofilm, film, obviously, pretty fast. And 
we're good to go. Now, thermofilm is a hot peel, so I should be able to peel it up real quick with no issue and done. And I want you to take note as I do these, how fast it's going, right? Because we're gonna use that as an example in a little bit as far as labor cost, right? So consider how quick that application was and ready to go. Now, the good thing about this, it's a great product. It's not gonna to stick to each other. It's still hot, right? No sticking, no problems, right? We don't want a product that's gonna to stick to itself. So we can quickly move on to the other side for the application. So we're gonna do the front again. I'm going to thread it over. I do say sleeve a lot, but thread, thread it over. Put my Teflon sheet, which yet I've dropped again, on top of it and get a quick preheat press. Goes real fast. Again, my fusion drops me into my second timer for application. Now it's gonna get a little tricky here because I'm actually gonna do that two color number. So I've got, I'm gonna put white down first. Stuck it together. So I'm gonna put white or red down first and I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker because I don't really need it to seal all the way. I just need it to tack down. So line it up. A little off center there, line it up and notice I'm doing just a quick hand movement to align it. I'm not really using a ruler or a, um, you know, any kind of a ruler or a laser system for this. I'm kind of giving it a feel. I've done it a lot. I pretty much know where it goes. Um, I like to use different jigs, maybe cut a piece of cardboard or something like that where you can just lay it down. The player perfect from stalls out of services is real easy, right? Because it comes all lined up already. So I'm gonna do a quick application here. I'm only gonna hit it for a couple seconds just to tack it down so I can go ahead and put that second color on. Um, again, I only have two application temperatures there or timers, but that's okay because I could have programmed from the beginning an additional timer. So I would have had a preheat and then a first layer and a second layer. Um, no need to because I'm, we're doing this pretty quickly. So we're just kind of knocking it out. So notice I only hit it for about four seconds. And then I'm gonna line up my second one. The shorter time and not full application time also lends itself to something not shrinking um, and being in the same place, right? Even though it's polyester, it might shrink a little bit and we can line this up pretty close. One or two shots, it's a guideline everywhere. And drop it down. A little bit off still. So this contour is a little bit tight, a little bit tighter than I like. But we're almost there. It's pretty time consuming, right? And I think we have an issue. So I'm going to lay this down. And what I'm doing here is my numbers don't really match up with my background. So a little bit closer. So I could be from shrinkage from the design, which maybe it was a little longer. It could have been when it was cut, it wasn't cut perfectly which could have been, and we should be golden right there. Still a little off, but okay. I probably should have cut them apart and did the application that way. Um, cut the name off the number, because that's where I was getting. My number was a little bit closer on the red than it was on the white. So we're gonna give this a full 10 seconds, a little bit longer because it's thicker. And we really wanna, you know, I don't want to say smash it down, but we really want to get to that adhesive and heat it up, all right, for that two-color application. And again, hot peel was still a little bit off, but looks pretty good. So in that point, when I was sitting there lining it up, what I should have done was probably cut the name off and line it up a little bit better because my five is a little off and I could have done a little bit better job 
but the simplicity of it is there, right? Putting down the name, putting down the number, really lining it up with that player perfect and dropping it in, all right? So let's talk about pricing. Um, I'm gonna pull up my PowerPoint again real quick and kind of look at the pricing for this jersey and what you would sell this jersey for, just to make sure we understand that the profitability is there, all right? All right, share my screen again real quick. Definitely getting better at the share screen aspect of it. Hopefully you can share them, see it. Um, any questions, Stacy? so far? Yes, there was one question that we got earlier. When you were um, demoing the volleyball jersey, when you were showing the Cyclones logo with the cavities already um, lasered out of it, Yep. Rich was wondering, will a laser cutter give a better cut for small details rather than a vinyl cutter? Um, that's a, I mean, definitely the laser will cut a little bit better, right? It'll be a little bit closer. Um, you will be able to see, or the detail will be a little bit better um, all the way around. The reason why we like to do the, I'm gonna stop this and put this right in front of the camera. The reason why we like to do the, the laser on stuff like this is because it really takes time out of weeding. So nobody's sitting there picking out cavities all the time, right? Um, and that goes along with our laser numbers too, right? If I pull, hold that back up. Oh, it's right here. If I hold this up, I mean, this is laser cut as well, right? I mean, that's a lot of little holes to get it. So the detail is definitely there, right? Um, so you could really cut it, cut it good. The thing you have to keep in mind when you do stuff like that, right? Make sure it's still connected at the top. You don't want to cut a letter out or something and then just have it fall off because then the application. So you need to be a little bit more careful of the art um, when you're using your laser. All right, anything else? Nope, that was it for now. Thank you. Right. Easy stuff. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about pricing, right? And when we talk about pricing, we want to make sure that when you're talking jerseys, just like everything else, you want to have a good, better, best approach, right? Um, you want to go in with, okay, well, this is, you know, this is good, this is better, and this is best. Uh, the reason for that, and I'll give you a great example. Uh, my daughter's in cheerleading. I went online to buy her spirit pack the other day. And the first thing that comes up is the spirit pack in, well, it was in a pack. It wasn't just individual spirit wear. So there was a good, better, best scenario, right? Um, and of course, she's standing next to me and like, well, I need it all, right? I need the best. It, is there, there's no other option. Um, I want to have everything. I want to look better than everybody else. I need it all. So good, better, best scenario. I mean, I preach it all the time and the, the very scenario of it um, took advantage of me the other day, right? But my point is, is you have different options and you have the ability for different options. So when we look at best here and you approach the market, you go to that coach and say, here's what I got right? Um, if he doesn't have an option, he might not like what you have to offer. And you might not get kind of, you might not get the sale, or you might not convince him that your value on delivery and time and quality isn't there just because he doesn't like the options or she doesn't like the options, right? So when we look at this best scenario, you have your jersey cost, which again, it wasn't a mesh jersey that I did. It was a full polyester jersey. You have your two side decoration through services, which 410 per side. Now, again, if you have a vinyl cutter and you wanted to cut that material yourself, that cost cuts in half, if not more. So you might do a single color number for $1.50, right? Which again, ups your profit, but you lose money in um, labor costs, right? You're gonna sit there, 
you're going to weed it all out. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's going to take a little bit of time to do that. So what you save in one place, you might give to another, right? So um, obviously, we all say it, time is money. Um, you just got to figure out what's right for you. Um, I like the player perfect in the pre-spaced letters. Um, it's just easy. You set it down, you line it up, you hit it, you're in a good spot. So this best jersey for me, um, without shipping, comes in at a cost of about $21.85. And I want to say worst case scenario, um, <clears throat> because we're using services. Again, we could cut that down by cutting itself. What are we selling it for? Um, you know, depending on where we're at in the competition, I think everybody's got an opinion saying, well, you know, they're not going to buy that from me here. They're not going to buy that from me there. Again, we're back to our value statement with what you're providing as options. Um, I got my prices straight from an online seller, um, you know, and that's where they're going to go look, right? If they don't like your prices and they don't have any other options, they're going to jump online, look at costing. Our jersey cost, again, online costing, MSRP is 1365. It can actually be cheaper. If you have a resale number and you've set that up cost wise, um, you can buy this from Badger or from SNS or something like that and probably take another 25, 30% on it, right? Um, so that's an option too. So our cost really without shipping is actually possibly could be lower, right? We could take that 410, make it two bucks. We buy the jersey in the same place and we're at, you know, $16, um, which would make our profit even higher. We wouldn't change our selling price, um, but we would, you know, cut our costs down. Um, so keep in mind that you want to charge, right, as much as you can for the product that you're selling. Um, don't skimp out. It's not always worth it. It's not always worth doing the job for no profit margin. Okay. All right, so let's go to, all right, we don't like the best. Let's see what other options you got, right? Well, let's talk about our typical good option, right? I don't have a good, better, best. I just have a good and a best. Um, my jersey cost 525, again, straight off the internet. That's what somebody's gonna go look. They're gonna, that's what they're gonna look. That's what they're gonna pay. You could probably get that for cheaper. Um, two side decoration, again, through services, player perfect on the front side, 410 per hit. Um, so you're at 810, one color per side. I know we did two colors here on one side just to show you how it works, but 410, one color per side. Total cost without shipping, 1349. My selling price, 2550. That's straight from an online reseller, which was easy to find. 2550, 2680. Um, they were all about there. They went down based on quantity, but they were all in that 25 range. Now, let's talk about it. My profit margins or my profit of $144 is based on 12 jerseys, right? A typical team size. Now, maybe there's only 10 on this basketball team. Maybe there's 12, you know, plus or minus. Um, but based on 12, we're at 144, right? Now, time. How long is it going to take me to press those? Realistically, you know, I was pressing, pressing them, you know, you could probably do one a minute. You know, if you're taking a lot of time and you haven't set them up, you probably do one every two minutes. Ultimately, 10 jerseys, two minutes or so a jersey, you're still at, you know, 25, 26 minutes. So profit mar margin, you're at 144 bucks for, you know, 30 minutes. Now, I do understand we've got some different costs like, you know, sitting down and ordering those jerseys or, you know, getting them in and receiving them in and costs. But this is kind of a rough estimate. I would say, you know, to get a little bit more into what costs are for you, I would probably dive into that lean logo formula that Josh and Zach put together up in your resources tab of the, of the product line or of the seminar and kind of really read through it. It's, it's not going to take very long to read through and it really gives you a good idea of what costs are, you know, your space, your labor costs, your overheads, right? So a great product. And then, like I said, 
you know, very, very important is our delivery of our product. Even though we have good, better, best here, you really got to get it in front of them, right? Um, Josh is going to cover a little bit later our spirit sale package. Um, that's where the cheerleading took advantage of me was on that spirit sale. I knew as a parent, once I dove in there, I got the best package for the spirit wear. And then I also on the bottom had some upsells to to it with the same exact logo, right? It was the same exact logo that's on the jersey and on the shirt, but down in the bottom. So now I'm after a sweatshirt and a and a, a visor because evidently the lights from the football stadium shine in your eyes. So you need a visor, um, just an upsell. Again, same logo that was on all the rest of the product just dropped into an upsell for me. So great way. <laughs> great way to you know maximize your profit line and add more because we do know um, that upsell product is less competitive you might be a little bit more have a little bit more competition on your jerseys those but you can gain some money back in your upsells um, because they're less price comparative all right we're moving along pretty good any other questions stacy i'm pretty much coming to the end I did not see any additional questions. All right, perfect. Uh, maybe I hit all my points. So um, I encourage you to make sure you go up and look at the show specials um, and definitely take advantage of those. There's some product categories and, and some deals on, on products. So make sure you call in, say that you're the heat press for profit, get a little bit of discount on your materials. Also, if you missed a session, make sure you go back. Um, they're all recorded live. All of the PowerPoints and sections are there for you to download and really take advantage of rewatching, taking notes, and so on and so forth. So um, if that's it, if, if I didn't miss any sta anything, Stacy, I am uh, good to go. Yep, I'm looking again. I did not see any additional questions. So I think you're right. good. Perfect. So thanks for coming again. My name is John Lauchs, and uh, you can make an appointment with me if you want to cover something else up in the, the speakers tab of the, the Heat Press for Profits. Uh, and I lost what it's called now. Up in the top of the seminar area, you could definitely make an appointment and talk to me and get on my calendar and connect. So again, thanks for coming, and we appreciate having you.